In 2021, a movie by the name of American Trader, The Trial of Access Sally, was released. It tells the true story of Mildred Gillards, a North American actress and broadcaster from Ohio, who in World War II was employed in Berlin by the Nazis to disseminate Axis propaganda to US troops and civilians. The movie helps us understand how she got to this position of becoming Axis Sally and the tough conditions in which she operated while serving in that role. Yet most of the movie is focused on the trial that was carried out on American soil after the war in 1948, at which she was charged with 10 counts of treason. While fascinated in and of itself, the story of the trial of Axis Sally gives a unique perspective about the power of propaganda and the ability to claim for a robust media effect in a court of law. The primary defense lawyer, played in the movie brilliantly by Al Pacino, put the power of propaganda on trial and thus exposed its severe limitations. While this discussion is provoked by a historical case, conclusions from it are very relevant to current debates about information manipulation and fake news. Propaganda, as the term is mostly used, can be defined as the communication of highly selective information purposely presented in a misleading way in order to provoke a desired effect on the targeted audience. Propaganda's link to technology has to do with the way in which the misleading information is disseminated. The ability to use mass media, including nowadays social media, to spread well-crafted messages to very wide audiences, some of them very far away, is what gives propaganda its seemingly grand power. Technologies such as mass printing, the radio and television all played a part in a myriad of propaganda campaigns throughout the 20th century and especially in war settings. World War II, in particular, saw the development and the rise in sophistication of massive propaganda machines on the part of both the Allied nations and the Axis nations. It is this massive propaganda machine that worried George Orwell and inspired him to write his famous 1984 book, in which propaganda and surveillance work in tandem in order to control the population and achieve what is perceived as the national interest. To this day, Orwell's text stands as a warning sign against the power of propaganda especially when it is utilized by a state. It is in the same historical settings of World War II that Mildred Gillers was utilized for the Axis war effort propaganda. She was the voice behind the Nazi-crafted messages delivered via radio that were aimed to discourage US soldiers from taking part in fighting against the Axis forces and to demoralize them. Messages that, for instance, exaggerated the potency of the Nazi army and the mortal risk Allied soldiers ran in confronting it. Other messages were communicated by Axis Sally's interviews of captured US soldiers and among other things were aimed at portraying Nazi treatment of US soldiers as humane. The fact that these messages were delivered by an American woman with an American accent and deep familiarity with American culture was aimed at lowering the guard of their audience and concealing their manipulativeness and one-sided nature. The abundance and relentlessness of broadcasted messages on their part were aimed at maximizing the effect of the Axis propaganda, but also had the byproduct of turning Gillers 
into a well-known figure among both U.S. soldiers and civilians. This fame worked strongly against her once the Allied forces won the war. As mentioned, the central focus of the movie is the trial of Mildred Gillers for her role as Axis Sally, as the voice of Axis propaganda aimed against the U.S. national interest. Her crime was thus allegedly against the American nation by giving effective aid to the enemy. To convince the jury, the prosecution therefore needed to make the case that Gillard's actions were not only noticeable, as they surely were, and maybe morally repugnant, but that they had a real impact on war efforts that the manipulation was somehow effective. This is exactly where it gets tricky. For one thing, because it is hard to link between media messages and a definite endpoint. The same media message can provoke different reactions according to who is the receiver and to many intervening settings. People interpret a given media message differently because it connects to their own lives in different ways. And what is true for a single media message is even truer for a large number of messages, like the messages conveyed in Axis Sally's broadcasts. Indeed, as the defense team argues correctly, some of the propaganda broadcasting even provided comfort to U.S. families for instance, when interviews of captured U.S. soldiers gave their families back home indications that their loved ones are still alive. Second, it is hard to claim that the listeners didn't know that what they are listening to is Axis propaganda. Most people would understand this intuitively after 10 minutes of listening to such broadcasts, and even those who didn't would be clued in quickly by people around them, especially soldiers. Once we understand this, that people knew they were listening to Axis propaganda, we understand that by and large people listen to it with great skepticism. It is thus hard to claim that such propaganda had any substantial effect on the American war effort when the listeners understood the tacit attempt to brainwash them. It is the same as listening to a commercial in the middle of a TV show. You know it's a commercial and you know that claims in them are often exaggerated or misleading. Third, Claims that media messages made a person or a group do something are treated with high skepticism both by scholars and by lay people. Games made me do this, song of this artist made me do this, or something I saw on TV or in the movie made me do this. These are all claims that were heard in courts in the last few decades and were usually rejected by the courts and by the general public. It is because we understand that media messages have limited effect and that they don't absolve the personal responsibility of the individual. Indeed, the movie American Trader shows that the prosecution in the trial of Axis Sally had little to offer to back their bold claims for true damage to U.S. national interest. Instead, it focused on the character of Gillers, on her willingness to cooperate with Nazi propaganda, and generally try to provoke moral panic in this case. At the end of the day, they wish to punish Gillers not for what her actions actually achieved, but for her moral and anti-patriotic decisions. The fact that their propaganda effect thesis collapsed and held no water didn't get them or the courts to drop the case, 
and like in many other cases, irrelevant elements end up informing the court verdict. Still, I think this movie about Axis Sally gives a very good argument against the power of propaganda and the ability to prove their power in a court of law. It is precisely this difficulty to prove with a fair degree of certainty that media messages can brainwash a person which should cause us caution when we claim that a person or a group were manipulated. Attempts to manipulate and actual manipulation are not the same.